Okay, so the next uh, presentation is um, from Jennings. Um, is about corporate editors. You can see, oh, okay, it's not there. Okay, not the full title, but so it's about, uh, you, you could see that also in your note, uh, in your book, booklet. It's about corporate uh, editors in the evolving uh, landscape of OSM, a close investigation of the impact to the map and community. So um, please, Janice. Um, okay. All right. Thank you all for coming. Uh, today I'm going to share with you some of my latest research involving corporate editing and OpenStreetMap. So what is corporate editing? I'm specifically talking about data teams. These are teams of employees that edit the map as part of their paid profession. Broadly speaking, this is a form of what the community is calling organized editing. This is an all-encompassing label to describe groups of contributors who are editing with a common goal or purpose. What's new about corporate editing is the editing itself. This is not the first form of corporate involvement in OSM. Rather, this is a new stage in the evolution of the relationship between corporations and OSM. And ultimately, corporate editing can be a contentious topic in the community. Some people are very suspicious of corporate intent and data use. The mailing list can get quite heated when it comes to discussions involving corporations. So my research all started with this map. I made this last October showing where data teams were editing. And the quantity and global scale of these edits prompted this new line of research. So this led to this paper this past spring that I wrote uh, with my co-authors Deepto Sarkar, uh, who was at the National University of Singapore at the time, uh, and Leisha Palin at the University of Colorado Boulder. The paper is titled Corporate Editors in the Evolving Landscape of OpenStreetMap, and was published last May in the Journal of Geoinformation. This paper set the groundwork for my current research. Therefore, I will present the methods and results from this paper to set the stage for my current research agenda. It's open access, so if you'd like to read it in full, just search for the title and the paper should come up. So what we set out to do was quantify and explore these activities as objectively as possible from the beginning. We read up on years of history in the wiki, mailing list, and blogs to get a better idea of the history of corporate involvement, and then looked into the database itself to quantify the activity. We found OSM has a long and complex history, especially involving corporations. Uh, without years of some amount of corporate involvement, I think OSM would look very different today, certainly less complete for many parts of the world. And it's for these reasons that we consider corporate editing just this latest stage in the evolution of corporate involvement, not the beginning of corporate involvement. I just think this is a really important contextual detail. So last November, the foundation released the organized editing guidelines. And one requirement in these guidelines is that organized editing teams maintain a list of usernames associated with their activities. This time last year, each of these 10 companies were maintaining lists of usernames for their data teams. So these became the 10 companies of our study. So here's an example list. And you can see this page is well monitored and updated. This list has been edited over, over 100 times to keep the data team usernames current. To quantify the activity, we used quarterly historical OSM QA tile snapshots. These are vector tiles for the entire planet that include a snapshot of the map as it existed uh, at the end of each quarter since 2006. For example, here's a comparison of the snapshots from London in 2007 to London today. Quarterly snapshots provide a computationally efficient way to include the history of the map when analyzing at the global scale. Uh, for example, if a corporate editor added an object to the map in January 2018, which was subsequently edited later in the year by a non-corporate editor, we're still able to capture uh, that initial corporate edit. OSM QA tiles are optimized for tile-based analysis with tools such as Tile Reduce. Uh, so for each quarter, we run this job uh, over the planet. We break the planet up into Zoom Level 12 tiles containing all the object metadata. Then we simply count the number of corporate edits on each tile by comparing the usernames against the curated list uh, of data team members. With Tile Reduce uh, and a decent sized machine, we can aggregate and sum all of these edits for the current planet in about 10 minutes. We do this for every quarter since 2006, which means running the same job 48 times uh, against each of the different tile sets. And this is what we find. Here we see where these 10 corporations have been contributing to the map since 2014. We can break it out by company. You can see that Telenav is pretty North American focused. CART, Apple, Mapbox, DevSeed, 
have global coverage. Grab is focused in Southeast Asia and Facebook in Thailand. These shouldn't surprise us. Uh, Microsoft and Uber have major presence in Australia and New Zealand. And Amazon Logistics is primarily uh, in the US and the UK. And here it is by the numbers. Ultimately, at the end of 2018, there were nearly 17 million edits from almost 1,000 corporate editors. Uh, you can find this table in the paper if you'd like to explore it in more depth. If we break it down by edit type, we find this. Most notable is this increase in total activity in 2018 from the previous years. Specifically, corporate teams are editing roads and adding new buildings. Next, we looked at what types of objects data teams are editing in relation to non-corporate editors in the areas where teams are active. So that is, the percent of the total number of edits that were performed by a data team on those tiles where a team was active. And then this is, per year, globally averaged by company. So most companies have a growing interest in editing roads in the areas where they're active, becoming more and more responsible for the total percentages of roads being edited. If we zoom in uh, here on two examples, we can interpret these a little bit further. So first we notice that Telenav primarily focuses on roads. This makes sense. In 2015, Telenav was responsible for a little over 25% of the total edits on average in areas where they were active. In the years since, that number has climbed to just over 50%. Um, on the right, we see that in 2016, CART was responsible for over 50% of all the edits in the areas uh, where they were active. Uh, not just roads, but this included amenities and POIs. And then in 2017, 2018, uh, that editing focus has shifted to the road network. Microsoft shows a consistently growing trend in the amount of road features that are editing, uh, growing from none to about 75% in 2015 to 2018. And companies like Grab, new to the scene, uh, are having a major impact on the road networks, responsible for nearly 75% of all the road edits in the areas where they're active on average. And so this is the complement to the previous figures. So this says, for areas where corporate teams are active, on average, the non-corporate editors are now responsible for less than 25% of the total road editing activity, uh, which is down from closer to 70% in 2017. So this implies then, where data teams are active, on average, they're now responsible for more than 70% of the road editing. Non-corporate editors, however, are still responsible for the majority of all edits about 70%, especially edits to buildings, POIs, amenities. Um, I think this trend is definitely continuing. I don't have the numbers yet for 2019. <laughs> if we look at the number of edits uh, from a single team each day, we see this fun pattern emerge. Uh, here you're looking at a five-day work week. Each of these groups represents uh, five days of editing activity punctuated by two days off. Uh, this is confirmed by seeing 52 of these recurring patterns in a given year. Uh, initially, I thought this was a telltale sign of kind of paid corporate editing, where editors are only active on weekdays when they're at work. Um, however, we do actually see uh, this or similar patterns among thousands of other mappers. Uh, most active contributors do have some pattern to their editing. People aren't just randomly uh, editing OSM. Um, so initially, I thought this could be a tell that would identify the undisclosed teams, uh, but that's not possible from the temporal signature alone. So let's take a step back. While we were able to quantify how much corporate editing is happening and where, we really haven't answered any questions about the impact on the map other than the sheer numbers. Uh, the impact is not what was measured. We need to dig deeper into the full history and context of the map to explore these types of questions. So here are three specific interactions that I think we may find if we do this. Uh, I want to investigate this idea of map seeding um, I'm calling this an extension of uh, what's been coined as map gardening, uh, discussed in other work. In this case, uh, paid editors are making, might, might be making some of the first edits in an area, um, kind of seeding the map, and then others are filling in and maintaining the map uh, after it's kind of been jump-started um, or seeded. Um, this, uh, the last mile, where corporate editors are coming through and connecting the gaps, fixing holes, uh, bringing the map really over the thresholds in terms of completeness. Um, and then third, just consistent, continuous uh, validation and quality assurance work. I think that these are all patterns that um, I expect to find by digging into the map a little bit further. So how to do this? 
we need the complete editing history of the map to see exactly when objects were edited and by whom. We need to know which usernames are associated with data teams. Uh, these lists are constantly growing and changing, and maintaining them in a machine-readable uh, manner is very time-consuming. Uh, so this is another area for uh, improvement and kind of cooperation among everyone. Um, and then we need to, as always, uh, build new tools that can help us search these data for these patterns. So let's dive in here. Grab and Singapore. This shows the interaction between Grab, the green and red dots, uh, and non-Grab editors, the pink lines you see. Uh, by the way, each of those red dots is a, is a restriction, uh, mostly turn restrictions here. Um, what we see here is that Grab is very active in Singapore, uh, doing more than just filling in the map, but also extensively editing existing features. If we look at the temporal profile of this activity, we find that Grab is uh, consistently active in Singapore. Uh, this type of editing has been described as maintenance editing uh, or map gardening, uh, where these editors are consistently engaged with the map in the area. Um, there's also a few of these non-corporate spikes in 2017 that I'm curious about if anyone has more ideas on that. Uh, next, Thailand. This is a heat map of edits from the Facebook team in Thailand since mid-2017. Um, this is very similar to the, the video summary that Facebook and ITO World produced. Um, which makes me happy, because that means that my data looks how it should. Um, I think what's particularly fun about this is to see how organized this effort is, uh, clearly mapping uh, with the tasking manager um, in this coordinated fashion. So if we go in closer, we see a different type of interaction than we saw in Singapore. Different company, different data use, uh, different geography. Um, Facebook edits are here in green, non-Facebook edits in pink. There's a clear division of labor here between the left and right. Uh, Facebook editors are here by uh, filling in the map uh, between the existing mapped areas. Um, and if you've seen the work with the rapid uh, editor and such, this, this makes sense. Um, very similar here, Facebook uh, is working to expand outwards from this previously mapped city. And here's the temporal profile for uh, all the edits in eastern Thailand. Uh, first notice that basically all of the editing in late 2017 and much 2018 was from Facebook. But then we see these blue spikes, especially in later 2018. Uh, investigating these edits directly suggests that they're part of a major building uh, mapping effort, uh, which if this is happening after the road network is filled in, then there is this case to be made for this concept of map seeding, where Facebook added the roads and other people are coming in and doing the buildings. Uh, CART, editing in Jamaica. Here's the overall. We see a lot of green and pink entangled together. Um, and then, if we go earlier, we see a lot of non-corporate editing activity in Kingston since 2015. As we begin to see green come in, it's kind of all over, and then towards the end, we see much more coverage. And here's that temporal profile. There's a decent amount of mapping activity over the years, and then CART was consistently active in 2018, editing small pieces here and there with one big massive editing of the road network towards the end. Uh, again, this is probably classified as map gardening or maintenance mapping as they're sporadically uh, active, doing small edits over time, uh, and then come in with one larger push at the end, perhaps an effort of completion or validation. Uh, this is Apple in Nigeria. Non-corporate editors have a major footprint, and then Apple comes in uh, kind of smaller chunks at first, uh, followed by small maintenance uh, editing while the rest of the community continues to map. So this is perhaps another case of maintenance and validation in general. Um, and we also do see a little bit of corporate editing uh, early on, um, in like 2014, which that would have been the Mapbox data team at that time. This is an animation of Amazon Logistics in Dallas, Texas. We see a lot of smaller edits over time. Uh, this is how Amazon looks in many US cities. Uh, this appears to be a form of kind of massive validation and quality improvement slash fixing um, as Amazon is incorporating feedback from their uh, delivery network. Uh, this team's activity has been growing recently um, as, the, as the graph in the top there really shows. So I think this is how a lot of people feel about corporate editing. Big question mark here. 
Uh, and also it's this kind of us versus them mentality um, and unsure what this interaction could look like. And I think perhaps a more accurate depiction of the complexity uh, of the larger US community would be something like this, right? Many different groups, each coming with their own uh, mapping motivations, independent value systems, data use goals. Further, I hate breaking it down like this because membership with any of these subgroups is really not exclusive. Mappers are consistently moving between these groups. So anyways, I just think this is one larger representation of the OSM community that helps put all these uh, questions about editing interactions uh, into perhaps a different, a different context, which is really important because we're growing at an incredible rate. <laughs> The number of active users each day uh, is increasing at a rate higher than the number of edits each day. So we have a different kind of editing signature among the entire community. We have more editors um, doing less individual work, but we have more communities, more people uh, involved. Um, I just want to put this up there to kind of give a, a little state of the, state of the map density uh, chart here. This is looking at object density, essentially the number of map objects uh, counted on each zoom level 12 map tile. Uh, at first glance, we say, look, there's mapped objects everywhere. Um, but in reality, this is kind of a diverging color scheme here from purple to yellow uh, with this log scale, where, uh, where the map is yellow and green um, is fairly complete, if you want to use that metric. Um, however, where the map is kind of purple and blue, we have like zero to 100 uh, objects uh, per zoom level 12 tile uh, about the area of a small city. So this is telling us, um, this is a lot like Pascal Nice's, uh, the map of unmapped places where we're seeing that we know something is there, um, but we have like 10 objects for a gigantic area. Um, so it's not mapped yet. So um, there's still a lot to map. Um, okay. So this is ongoing research that started with the identification and quantification of corporate editing in OSM uh, and leads us to a complicated landscape where corporate editing is having a major impact on the map in many different ways. Um, these impacts need to be investigated at the individual edit level to see the interaction with the editors around them and blanket statements about corporate editing in one place does not always apply to editing patterns in other places. So if you'd like to read uh, the paper in full that introduced this, uh, it's open access and you can find it at that address. Um, and thank you very much, and thank you to uh, my co-authors, uh, Deepto Sarkar and Leisha Palin, um, as well as uh, Mikhail Jubal and Jinal, who helped me um, put all the data teams together and do this work. So, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Janet. Um, I think this is exciting. Thank you for the presentation. We have more uh, time for uh, questions. Um, so um, if you have any questions, we have one mic there, the other mic is here. You can just raise your hand and then we'll come, back to, we'll come to you with the mic. Uh, first of all, thank you for an amazing presentation. So I'm Nicola from Microsoft, so just uh, to be clear. Uh, yes, we're doing a lot of uh, road editing and primarily very complex uh, road properties such as turn restrictions, polyvalent turn restrictions, destination signs in Australia. Um, and I, I'm thinking how is it that we can get the community to, to inspire them and to teach them how to do these complex editing tasks? Because in Australia we saw that uh, people simply created very complex uh, road junctions, but never bothered to put the destinations on them. Uh, we wish we can, first of all, we're very proud of the work we're doing in Australia. We, even though we're based in Serbia and US, we're proud of doing the work in Australia. Uh, but how do we teach the community to do this? That's a great question. I'm, I'm probably not the best person to, to answer that, but I think just saying that in this room is uh, probably the best way to start the conversation around that. Um, that's, that's fantastic that you guys are, are doing that work, I think. Um, and I think these are some of the kind of nuanced patterns that we can start to tease out um, in the data to identify where this is happening or where this needs to be happening and start to kind of use these tools, use these identifications to further drive that conversation. Um, 
and hopefully just be getting more people involved. It's a little bit of a cop-out answer, but um, yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, the corporate edits often had a lot of new features, and there also was a spatial divide between the, the rest of the community and the corporate members. So I assume there also wasn't any effect that the new features that the corporate members did map um, was continued and enriched in detail by the rest of the community. So they stayed on the same level after that. So let's see. Um, mostly they're staying on the same level. I think that's... Uh, it depends. Um, that's kind of a hard blanket statement to make. It kind of depends on the type of feature and where it's happening. Um, but a lot of these these numbers, um, the those animations I showed, um, each of those that those animations with the corporate editing in green were showing the latest version of the map. Um, and so if those were showing up, that means that that was the most recent um, edit to those objects that hadn't been subsequently edited. Um, so a lot of that is uh, a lot of those edits are not um, are not being overwritten or, or updated by by the community. But this is certainly something that I want to explore now in more depth. Um, as if you go back to like earlier 2017, and and now we have all of 2019 to look at as well. Is um, this data that's being created uh, as being maintained then um, by uh, by different people or by a local community, etc. Um, this is certainly I think an area to to explore and get that question right, and it's just really hard to ask. So that's kind of exactly what I'm trying to dig into. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have about five minutes more uh, question time, so we have one question here and the other there. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, in, the, in the grouping of the, the participants, you had one uh, group which said government editors with a question mark. Did you see um, those kind of hints in the data that they might be there? Ah, um, I didn't have a way currently to, uh, to quantify that. I was only like, comparing that against the corporate editing team list. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I, I really just kind of threw, threw that um, graphic together to just show the complexity of the community and the many communities within the community. Um, and so I think that, yeah, we can definitely try to break it down and find editing patterns, but they're going to be different among e each of these communities. Um, but that is certainly... I think something to, to look at beyond this is if we're going to be classifying you know, these types of edits and what's happening with like, corporate editors to also be looking at all the different other types of edits that's happening in there. So. Yeah. And uh, you have differentiated between map seeding and map gardening. It's about new mm -hmm. features and mm -hmm. uh, edit mm -hmm. on, the, on, on the existing features. Have you looked at also an on a tagging, so, or are they just, just they are uh, focusing on the geometry, but are, are they enriching also the tagging system or not? Yeah, so that's something that I'm, that I'm trying to dig into. I think that's, that's super important, and that's just a really hard question to ask at scale. Um, but we can do that now. Um, we haven't been able to do that for long, but, um, but we do have infrastructure now in place to, to do that. Um, so I think these are questions that we can now only begin to start answering. Um, as we've kind of been developing these infrastructures in parallel to, to do that. Um, do generally, I think there is a lot of enriching um, that's happening in tags of just like things I've observed. Um, and so, yeah, that's something I definitely want to definitely look into further. If you want to collaborate on that, that'd be fun. <laughs> Are there more questions, please? One question there, please go ahead. Hello. Um, I was just wondering, how was the paper generally received? Um, what kind of feedback did you get from it? <laughs> um, that, yeah, that's maybe not fair. Um, that's not helpful. That's not helpful to anyone. Um, uh, I don't know how it's been necessarily received like in academic communities yet. I haven't heard much like uh, back from that. I have 
Um, I definitely have heard from a lot of um, the corporate people that like I think these are valuable tools to be using and exploring. And um, I, um, yeah, I think it's I think it was surprising. I think there's some surprising aspects to it in terms of the quantity, especially. Um, but I think that I mean more than anything, I think these are valuable metrics uh, for everyone. Um, and I mean I've been collaborating to put this together, like collaborating with with data teams uh, to do this work. Um, so that's on, the, that's on the corporate side. I think the community side, I haven't heard a, a ton. It got like tweeted out and stuff. Um, people have talked about it. Um, but I guess I haven't really, uh, I'd be curious to definitely, would love to hear, would love to hear more um, what people think. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, we have, uh, okay, we have one minute. So please go ahead. Yeah. I think one interesting aspect, which which I haven't seen elaborated that much, but maybe you can comment it, is whether the added contributions of corporate members actually add to the overall volume, or they take away by pushing away existing members. Did you look at it from that perspective as well? That's a that's a tough question. Um, take away from existing. Like space for it. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and I think, and, and that's where we need to really drill into it because um, there's, there's arguments are made on both sides of that. Some people would see that and say, hey, someone came in, they mapped all the roads already, there's no roads for me left to map. Um, however, there's other research out there that shows that that's intimidating for users to come uh, across these areas that don't have that data yet. And that many mappers, um, when they come into the map, uh, want to be doing densification. So they want to be working in areas where someone already has worked and they want to fill that network in. Um, and people are more likely to engage with that, um, some people. So I think this is where it gets really complicated. Um, so I don't think it's, I don't think you can say one way or the other on that. I think there's research kind of, especially showing densification and, and not as much showing the, the, other, the other way, but definitely could think about that as it could be having an effect, but that's hard. It's kind of hard to quantify. Um, but definitely I think important to keep in mind moving forward. Um, okay, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, one more, one more question, and then that's it. <laughs> thank you. Um, hi, this is Sajid. I work at Development Seed. Uh, thanks, Jennings. Uh, one question. So, um, I know you've been working on putting together all this data all many years. Do you have any asks or suggestions in terms of how companies may organize their editing better so you can get this data faster? Ah. Uh, um yeah, uh, if only someone would put together something where you could organize like groups of editors together into like a team, uh, that would be uh, that'd be pretty cool. Now I think there's a lot of um, I think there's a lot a lot that can be done to like make that easier to get um, to maintain keep these lists up to date of not just corporate editing but all editing, all organized editing. Um, and so I think that like work like uh, OSM teams um, is huge uh, to to be able to to kind of look at this. Um, I think that's probably the best way, best way forward is finding ways to like, we're no longer, it's no longer just one big community of, of many individual mappers. Like this is, OSM is a community of many, many communities and so ways that we can have better logical groupings in there to do these types of analysis and, and, and break it down um, is, super, is super important to kind of accurately get at the story of how the map is evolving. Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, it seems to me that your uh, presentation has generated a lot of interest. Thank you very much.